Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to Vegas, where they do it bigger and better than any other city when it comes to the big time fights. We're at the Thomas and Mack Center, our main event. I want to see some head Opening head round head here, head. scheduled for 12. Nice block. is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Oh, he's hurt right there. He's big shot there. Not a good sign of the night to come. He's down here in the first round. Came out a little careless. One, two, three, four, five. So he goes down but able to get up to his feet. Teddy, what should he be thinking about now? Well, right now, just surviving, but if he survives, then he better figure out why he was put on the floor. You see him holding on. Hits him in the mug with the right. Blocks away that headshot. Showing you some defense there with the block. Keep working the jam. Good. Good block. And just grabbing on to his opponent. Halfway through round number one. We've sat through thousands and thousands of fights together ringside, and sometimes you can tell just from the start, like a fight like, of what you're going to see down the road. And what you're not going to see. You're not going to see a lot of guys running. You're not going to see a lot of defense. You're going to see two guys coming and letting it all lay out. Silk's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Good defensive skill with the block by Silk. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. Unable to score with the hook. Right to the head with that right. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Back to the mark. You're looking good. That up. Silk's got to rely on his corner now to do what it takes to get him back physically and mentally. It's always a challenge when you've hit the ground. Parries that punch intended for the head. Able to cover up that gut. Solid shot, the overhand left. Another huge shot comes in early on in this fight from him. Well, he understood that his opponent, Joe, was a slow starter. He's jumping right on him, taking advantage. Come on, get focused. He missed that uppercut. Keep working the body. Silks is cranked by an uppercut. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Good 
the body. Halfway through this round. Good effective work with that straight right hand. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Look at the accuracy with that hook upstairs. And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Final 10 seconds of round number two. And that's the end of round two. Well, we've seen this before, a fighter with a bad cut, and sometimes a fighter that now has a much greater sense of urgency. Yeah, right now, if he was gambling, if he was in a casino, he's rolling the dice, he's hoping to come up with seven. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Eddie, if you could only pick out a few characteristics for a fighter and apply them to them, what would they be? Well, I think what would be the ability to overcome and the ability to be dependable. Everyone looks at the neon things, the speed, the power, they're tangible. We feel comfortable with those things. We can grab onto those things. But what about the talent of somebody being able to make a choice, a hard choice, in a very dark place? Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. I want to see combo! Good counter punch by Silk. And I love the way he delivered that, Teddy. Yeah, he's using his feet to set up his offense. You don't always see that, but you see it there. Silk scoring with that right hand. Side side, move your head. He needs to improve the accuracy a little bit. That was comical by Silk. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Keep working the body. He just missed that shot up top. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. Three minutes gone by in this round. Standing straight up. 
move that body. You need to move that body more. Round number four is underway. A chance for us to look at Teddy's scorecard. And obviously, the rounds is circled there. You see the knockdown was scored. And that's how professional boxing is supposed to be. The guy who lands the cleaner, more effective punches, he gets an advantage. He gets an extra score. He gets to him with an uppercut. Oh, man, he's in rough shape after absorbing that blow. Now you see the southpaw pulling the trigger with the straight left. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Teddy, it is such a gift that he has right here. We're seeing such a technically sound defensive fighter. Yeah, we are. You know, the old-time trainers would say, Teddy, he's doing the hard part. And that is the hard part, making the guy miss. Now he has great. to start doing the fun part, hitting him. Well-placed left hand there. A little head hunting with the right. And he ties up on the inside. Body shot, body shot. Got him. Relax, relax. Good exchange. He fires back. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Finish with those oh. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. Very nice defensive guard there. You can almost see it just by the way a fighter sits down on their stool at the end of a round. As we come to the end of this round, you can tell that he's full of confidence and he can't wait to get right back out there and continue doing what he was doing. Well, you're right. The first thing that I notice is his back's not leaning against the corner pad. You know, that's a defeated fighter. That's a fighter. He don't want to go back. Something bad happened to him. You know, he's leaning back like that. You have to pick him up from the stool. He's got all his weight forward. He can't wait to get going. You know that he's positive. You know that he had a good round. Good action throughout. We'll see if it keeps up in this round of what has been a very even fight. Scored well with that straight left. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Keep working the body. Keep 
He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Halfway into round number five here. And he engages in the clinch. Silk's way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. Able to get rid of that one. Silk's not putting forth much offense at all. Now, listen, I get it. You put forth some offense, you got hurt, you were stunned in this fight, so now you're strictly thinking defense. But at some point, he's got to change. Yeah, he does. Otherwise, he can't win this fight. And his opponent is just going to keep coming, coming like that ocean. Bang it into that shore, and it's going to come further up the shoreline. It's not going to go away. There you go. Look at good. Look good. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. Silk's approach to these remaining rounds is going to be critical. I believe, I think you do, that he's trailing on the scorecards, but I also think that he's capable of turning things around. Well, right now it's so close, it's gonna come down to the inside, I believe. Whoever does not make those solid agreements, doesn't sign their name to the contract. You know, you get a little tired, it gets a little tough. You put your hands behind the guy, you hope the guy grabs and he goes along with it. Whoever doesn't go along with that, whoever brings their hands back and throws those punches, those two, those three, those four extra punches, they're gonna win the fight. Back to live action now in what has been a closely contested fight. One of those fights that somebody is still waiting to break through and be a difference maker in. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Here's something that's a key factor now, and that is his ability to simply defend himself. He's doing a wonderful job at it. Yeah, he is, and that gives him the ability to always be fresh and confident round after round since he's not taking a lot of punishment. Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Well placed, straight right hand. Things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good, and now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. Not much action as he just ties up. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Work the body. Keep working the body. And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> what you want? That's it. 
Silk's work rate is impressive, Teddy, but his connect percentage is not. No, That's there's two reasons for it. So one is his opponent. His opponent is pretty smart there. You know, he's not just standing there saying, hey, hit me. He's moving, he's being Focus. smart defensively. The other thing is the punches are a little too wide. He needs to shorten them up a little. End of the round is upon us, and we have a fighter in front of us who just looks gassed. He looks tired. Now, Teddy, what can he do to overcome that when this fight starts back up? Well, first of all, this is where you're searching to those corners that you're not forced to search, kind of like when you were a kid and your mother told you to clean your room and go into those little nooks and crannies where you never knew there was dirt. Now you got to start looking into nooks and crannies inside yourself places you didn't know were there before. You better find them. You better find them quick. Don't waste your punches out there. Be smart or you're gonna tire yourself out. So we've reached the halfway point of this main event. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. over but couldn't turn it into a connect protecting his head well with his guard Come on, get now he's telling us everything you need to know about what his condition is we saw him stunned earlier in this fight now the clinching yeah this is a true polygraph test for a fighter he's telling you the truth I don't feel right it's up to his opponent now to take advantage of that Taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. <laughs> he missed with that headshot. that punch by Silk. Coming towards the end of the seventh round, 10 seconds to go. Silk's blocking ability is doing well for him there. And that's the end of round seven. That was good. We have this one. We got it. Throw the body, then to the head, then finish to the body. All we need is water up there, and that's it. You don't need that, no. Throw that away. Listen, you need to move your head more, side to side, okay? I want to see that head move more. He's been setting a really good pace here as we start round number eight. Teddy's scorecard, you can see that he's up there. Now, you got to be careful, though, not to come off that gas pedal. Yeah, because 
You're right. There's a double-edged sword here. Not only careful because you've been scoring, but just by being aggressive, that is what's been keeping your opponent defensive minded. So as soon as you let up off that gas pedal, his hands are going to start moving. Right, body. and the judges will notice that right away if the other guy's working more. Well, obviously. Nice block by Silk. <laughs> Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Watch the hook. <laughs> Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Now just wasting away some time with that clinch. Sound defense. Good block that time by Silk. Oh, good exchange there. Silk's flat-footed. There's no other way to describe it. He's not a fighter that gets up on his toes, moves around, gives you angles. He's flat-footed. Yeah, you don't have to be on your tricycle all over the place, but you can step a little bit, get out of range. He's doing nothing. And he's holding. You're not focusing. Hitman. The countdown, the final moments of this round. Keep circling. Don't stand in front of him. This is it. Keep on. Keep boxing just like that. You're going to take this one. You got any more of these? Back to action here at the start of this round, which is just part of what has been a very evenly fought fight. One of those fights that's going to be very hard to score. Gets rid of that body shot. And he just holds on there. Tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Boy, some of the old school guys would really appreciate this, wouldn't they, Teddy? Just great upper body movement. So elusive up top. Yeah, this is an example like they used to say in old days. He stands right in front of you, and you can't hit him in the backside with a handful of bulk shot. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Well, he may be in bad shape, but all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden he's able to avoid punches and survive. You know, boxing is a funny business. It's a metaphor for life. You know, sometimes you have somebody outside and they don't say what they want to say. They have to have a drink, a little alcohol to start saying the things that are on their mind. Sometimes a fight is no different. You know, he gets hurt and now all of a sudden all his inhibitions are gone. And now he's doing all the things he's supposed to do because he's not thinking about anything except the things he should have been thinking about. It's automatic. Silk showing you a little defensive skill there. Right? They'll move away from that punch. Took a go of it to the body, but came up empty. Distance, such a key factor always, Teddy, when it comes to defense. With his good foot movement, he's been keeping that distance. His opponent, how does he close that gap properly? Well, first of all, he's got to use his jab to close it because he's getting picked off coming in. He's getting pot shotted. So he's got to have something coming at his opponent that keeps him distracted. Use that jab. Now, don't use it conventionally, Joe. You're jabbing at the head, you're not finding nothing. You're just finding space. So jab a little lower. Drop the sights a little bit. Jab at his chest. Just so you touch something, and then you can work your way in. You can start to find them a little. Keep your hands up, all right? You have to keep your hands up. You gotta give me the double jab. Yeah, we'll him, we'll him. You're not giving me the double jab. You're only giving me one jab at a time, okay? You got that? All the eyes are on him to start this round. Silk's legs look just a little shaky, but keep in mind, he barely survived that last round. No, but keep one other thing in mind. I agree with you, Joe, but he's been here before. He's very experienced. If anyone knows how to get out of this, he does. Defense there. That was a fine block by Silk. Relax, relax. In and out, in and out. Silk's almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. Precise at all by Silk. Halfway through round 10. <laughs> Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Nice work. Defense just covering up down low. <laughs> Silk's got something to think about now. He just threw a punch and had one coming right back at him. His opponent scored well with the counter. Beat him to the bench. You're not focusing. Unable to land clean by Silk.
blocks that belt line well. Counting down towards the end of the 10th round, 10 seconds to go. And round 10 comes to an end. Just under six minutes left in this fight. Round number 11, scheduled for 12. Teddy's scorecard shows that he has a comfortable lead. And he should keep that comfortable lead. That's the key. You only have to keep it for a short period of time now. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't get greedy. Bring it home. Blocks the headshot. There you go. Look at good. Look good. Keep moving. Keep moving. There you go. Keep your body moving. Seconds to go in this 11th round. Needs to improve that accuracy. Miss with the headshot. Work the body, kid. Body shot. That's it. Unable to connect by Silk. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Silk's throwing lots of punches, and not many are landing. But what's that old saying? Hey, you put enough out there, something's going to stick. Well, at least he's controlling the rhythm. He's keeping control of the pace right now. And at least when you're throwing, your opponent, for the most part, he's being handcuffed a little bit. Nice, nice. And that's the end of round 11. He's winning the fight. I mean, don't, don't tell me anything different than he's winning the fight. Yeah, except at the end of the fight, Sometimes these judges, they do tell you things differently. Right. Hopefully that's not the case. Well, he's, he's up way on the punch stats. I know he's ahead on your scorecard, and you can just tell everything that's happening in the ring. He's in control. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. Come on, bring it on. You're still not moving enough. Come on, give fuck. Not able to connect with the uppercut. And he returns on that exchange. Not able to land the headshot. Move. 
halfway through this 12th and final round. Silks is stunned and he, oh, that's gotta hurt. And once again, he goes down. The question is, can he rise up again? Somehow, some way, he's going to continue on here. And if he's going to stay in this fight, now he's got to avoid his opponent like the Black Plague. How about that exchange? Last minute of this last round. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. Last 10 seconds of the fight. That was a dominating performance tonight. Yeah, this is one you would think there's no drama in the reading of the scorecards. Let's hear those scorecards and send it up to the ring. Listen, he was the better fighter, he was the busier fighter, he's the fighter that absolutely deserves to have that unanimous decision go the way it did. Hey, you never like to say this, I say it in jest, but this is one where you could have made up the scorecards before the fight. Unfortunately, sometimes these judges do, but tonight, it turned out okay. Good, enjoyable, entertaining fight it was. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us.